welcome to the celebration. My best friend. Tended to bury it. And, 
I forgot to even mention my name, except at the end of the foreword. But at, at the beginning of that foreword, I quoted some lines of the poet W.B. Yeats. And those lines, for me, are exemplify something important about Ruel's practice and her viewpoint. And the lines from Yeats are from his wonderful poem, Among School Children. And they go, O body swayed to music, O brightening glance, how can we know the dancer from the dance? Well, in Gestalt therapy, we cannot really know the dancer from the dance because we believe that the self is process, that it's unfolding in the present moment and that it's always fluctuating and changing. And so the dancer and the dance virtually become the same thing, which is what I think Yeats intended and what I think that Ruella's practice and thinking exemplifies. And so I have another quote I want to give you. There's an artist, a Korean artist named contemporary, named Lee Wu Fan, who I'm very fond of, to the degree that I once bought one of his works, that I'm also very fond of, although it's a drawing because I can't even begin to afford his paintings. And Lee Wu Fan is among the most relational of painters. He believes that painting in itself and sculptor, and he's also a wonderful sculptor, is about relation to something. And I want to read you a quote of something that he said. He said he defines his artistic projection as a meeting between the interior and the exterior, allowing to envision poetic space, the one he calls the art of resonance. And it starts from the principle, he says, that seeing, choosing, borrowing, or moving is already part of the act of creation. And that also, as much as Yeats's lines of poetry are about Ruella's practice and her viewpoint. The art of resonance that create, that seeing, borrowing, choosing are already, and moving, above all, are already <coughs> the act of creation. So I think that it's important to say that I'm talking about dance in Yeats's poems, that I'm talking about poetry, that I'm talking about painting, and sculpture, and sculpture, why? Because Ruella exemplifies in her theory, of her writing, her teaching, and her practice, the aesthetic basis of Gestalt therapy, that were founded upon the idea that experience is never just simply given, but it's created, and that it's created through a process that can be weighed in aesthetic terms not simply scientific. <coughs> so, I don't want to go on too long. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's been all too much. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> but, <clears throat> just a couple of other things I want to say. that the, the idea that experience is being always made, created, through an aesthetic process, leads us to the fact that experience is the core idea in phenomenology, which is the basis of Gestalt therapy. And it's a place where the aesthetic, the artistic, and the phenomenological basis of Gestalt therapy meet. And that's what Ruella, in her thinking and practice, exemplifies. So, Ruella, I want to turn it over to you to speak for yourself. But that's the framework in which I like to contemplate your, your work. I just want to take a minute and look at you all because I thought no one would come. That's <laughs> what I usually do. Anytime I have a seminar, I think, is anyone going to come? And Dan said,
said, expect no one to be surprised. <laughs> so thank you for this wonderful surprise. <laughs> and I, to be respected by the people I love most and respect in all the world. Michael and Dan, the two of you and Jean-Marie Ruby have emboldened me to go forward. I really, Jean-Marie isn't here because he's in Bordeaux right now, but I thank you so much. Um, you're really a gift to me. Uh, give me a minute because this moment will never come again. No moment ever comes again, but this one especially will come too soon. Yeah. I thank you so much for being here. I have so many families here, so I thought I would introduce my families to my family. And first, there's my nephews are here, and they're, they're partners, and we have a very small family, and almost all my nephews are here except the one that's doing surgery, Maddie. <laughs> probably doing surgery at this moment. So I thank you all so much for coming, and I just love you, and it's wonderful to share this night with you. Then there's my family of yoga teachers. I have two of my yoga teachers here, and I adore them. <laughs> the Iyengar Yoga Association of Greater New York. Did I do that right? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm so glad. They're just down the street on 12th Avenue. You have inspired me so much, almost 30 years. Although I think I hit my peak about 15 years ago, but still, I appreciate the maintenance. And you have, you're just my inspirations. And um, the family of friends, the friends who have gotten me through the pandemic by walking with me in the park low these many months. My friend Toby, my friend of 71 years, came from Sarasota, Florida. Whoa. Yeah. I have friends from Northwestern University. Mark played us in. I really appreciate them. Then there is the Friends of the Gestalt Associates for Psychotherapy. I trained in 1982 with you for four years. Yeah. And then I came on faculty in 86. And I have so cherished you as my teachers and supervising me so that I could then be supervising with you. You've been the best of friends. I thank you. And I have students here from the Gestalt Associates, and I'm so glad to see the people I haven't seen in person. Seeing you from the legs down is like a unique <laughs> experience. <laughs> um, I have friends from the New York Institute for Gestalt Therapy, where I've been honored to be a full member since 1986 when I was in class with Laura and Dan and our dear friend Eric Worthman. And Eric and Dan and Richard Kitzler and I had a wonderful group together. Eric and his wife Holly were supposed to be here, but suddenly and shockingly he died on Saturday. Yeah. So we have a heavy heart thinking of him tonight his brilliance. And we will have a memorial for him. So I just wanted to that. Uh, and then those of you from the Center for Semantic Studies, Hilka and Sebastian, who have been with me almost the 22 years that I've been in business as a center. Zachary, Rodell, where are you? Did you mind? Okay. And Chris Pantica, my food minister. I just love you dearly. Without the four of you, I don't know that we would function. I know we would not function so well. <laughs> so I thank you so much for that. And there are students here who have graduated from the Developmental Somatic Training Program and gone to webinars and, and workshops and somatic supervision groups. Because of your interest and your curiosity and um, your confusions and the times you get angry with me because I'm not explaining it well, you have really taught me to teach. and. The work that's in this book has unfolded. You know it unfolds with you every time I meet you. So I'm so grateful. And I think I've said, oh, and I also want to thank Chef James, who made this so <laughs> wonderful, the first Presbyterian Church in New York. Really.
Well, I've got to add one thing that I want everybody to know, uh, which I heard just today. At noon today, I attended a colloquium at William Allison White, given by two psychoanalysts uh, on embodied talk. Doris Brothers. I know you know about Doris. Yeah. You know about the colloquium? Yes. Because they quoted your work. <laughs> and, you know, it's kind of exciting. The psychoanalysts right now are trying desperately and as fast as they can to try to catch up with us. <laughs> and they're, they're way behind, but they're getting there. And in this talk about changing the language of psychoanalysis to be more embodied, they said, uh, you have to check out the six fundamental movements of the world. <laughs> 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 